Hello. Hello. Okay, oh, yeah. We're on. I didn't know if we'd start recording. Or not. <laughs> the other end. Um, but yeah, yeah, we're here. We're back. Yeah. How is everyone? Don't answer that. I don't know why I do this every yeah, time. You literally do it every time. It's like you're expecting a response. It's like, it's yeah, never gonna... well, respond yeah. to the comments by all means, but it's going to be a little bit of a delay. <laughs> Yeah, just put I'm fine or something like that. I, I don't want an essay. Yeah, but, we hope you are yeah. all fine. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, we hope everyone's staying healthy and um, safe and whatnot. And um, due to these trying times, like we mentioned last time, we're doing the angle lock. Yeah. Or angle lockdown, whatever. Keeps us busy. Uh, yeah, so last time was um, to do with the releases. Um, but I think this time... Uh, this is going to be kind of the norm from now on while the lockdown's in place, where we're just going to, we've thought of three questions each to ask each other about the wrestling industry. And this is, we haven't discussed any of these. No. This is all, you know, uh, as of now kind of shit. And we're just going to see how it goes. You know, it's basically just, um, instead of a review, it's a conversation. Yeah, basically um, opinions and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so, um, yeah, we'll, we'll fire it up. So, yeah, so, so. Uh, usual, you know, like, subscribe, we're all on Stitcher, SoundCloud, Apple Music, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that usual stuff. Just find us Angle Slam podcast and you'll find us. But obviously, at the moment, this is the Angle Lock because we're funny. Yes. Angle Lockdown. <laughs> yes, we're we're so, funny. We might yeah, not be, we're, right we're, right yeah, we might not be dads, but we definitely got dad jokes. Yeah, it's this is the effect the lockdown's having on us. <laughs> Slowly uh, going our, crazy. Our, our humour's deteriorated <laughs> into dad jokes without children. So, uh, anyway. Yeah, so go uh, on, you, you asked the first question then. I think it's a case we're going back and forth, aren't we? So one question, yeah. one answer, and then back and forth. Well, yeah, I, I did think at first, um, you know, they are kind of going to be related to what's been going on, uh, but, you know... They, I don't want to just go on about the releases, but um, recently, you know, a couple of our friends said, oh, I'm getting rid of the network because of this and that and other stuff. Mm-hmm. Nothing to do with the price, just because of their outlook with the company. Do you think the WWE network as a whole uh, hinders or uh, improves the company as far as, like, pay-per-view buy rate sales? And stuff? Right, so this is question one for me, then. Um, yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. I mean, funny enough, I was actually re-listening to CM Punk's podcast with Colt Cabana the other day. I thought to myself, yeah. I haven't listened to that in a long, long time. I thought I'm, I'm busy working. I might just sit and listen to it while I'm at work. Um, and a lot of those points keep ringing true even today. Yeah. That this, yeah. he's so on the ball with stuff that it's still happening now, and it's just like, oh my god, I can't believe this stuff that he's saying is still going on. And one of those things that popped up was about the network. And he was like one of the only guys that was popping up to management and saying, what's going to happen? Like, do, do I get uh, like the same kind of pay that I usually do? Do we get the same pay to do with like house shows and all this other stuff and pay-per-views and buys and all that kind of stuff? How does it work with our money? Because obviously if it's just £10 a month, we're not getting as much of pay-per-views. Does that mean we don't get the same cut we usually get? That kind of mm. stuff. And... Yeah, so that going into your question, does it help or does it hinder? Um, it's great for the viewer. It's great oh, for yeah. us. Ten, ten pound a month for every single pay per view and loads of original content, be it good or bad. If you're the ultimate wrestling fan, it is the perfect streaming service. It literally has yeah. everything that was to do with WWE or anything that was related to that property. So it is good in that respect. It has plenty of things on there like WWE 24, 365, all your pay-per-views, all your backstage stuff, fun little segments, and it's, you know, there's loads of stuff on there. Yeah. However, when it comes to the performers, I'm wondering whether it does hinder them. I I, well, I really don't... It's, a, it's quite a difficult question to a- answer because it really does help in the sense of a fan, but for a person that works in the business, I don't know whether it's actually a good thing. Well, as as far as the performers themselves, um, I would imagine, and I hope so, that they just it wouldn't affect their paycheck at all. You know, it's just okay. This is our new streaming. It's basically a streaming site. Uh, they've got to do nothing different. They're just doing what they do on Raw, SmackDown, whatever, and so their paycheck should remain untouched. As far as financial as a company gain, I mean. I get in an ideal world 
Vince and the powers that be who want every WWE fan to have the network. Yeah. Because there's millions, if not billions of fans around the world, a uh, guaranteed £10 a month off billions of people, of course the money's going to be raking in. Um, I think we discussed before WrestleMania 36, I don't know if we did it on, on the podcast or not, it was still going ahead and box office. And for the Saturday, I think it was 40 quid yeah. or $40. And on the Sunday, it was 60 Which was ridiculous. Which it, even if it, you know, it wasn't an empty arena, even I'd be thinking, that's still it. That's a lot, yeah. Now, if their plan was to go, well, you know, whatever, if they, they think that's extortionate, they can get the network. Number one, you're always offering that free, that first month free anyway. Yeah. So you shot yourself in the foot. They could go, fuck it, let's sign up to the network, watch Mania, and then subscribe. No money spent. Yep. Um, but if there was no network about... I mean, you know, okay, let's, uh, we won't focus on Mania 36 because of what's happened with COVID-19 and all that stuff. But if this was a year ago, Mania 35, um, and there was no network, and those are the prices, as extortionate as it might be, I'd probably still pay because it's Mania. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it's almost... Because that's obviously more money than what the network costs and more people would be buying Mania through a box office platform because there is no streaming service. I don't know. I don't know if it's hard. I can't do the math, obviously, and I don't know how many subscribers it, they it have. Is, it is, but yeah, it's quite a difficult one to kind of get around because like I say, it's, they're damned if they do and they're damned if they don't. Yeah, They I need think... to do it because they need to get those people in on a constant basis, but then if they don't do it, someone else could have potentially done it, or it's not you're going to put a lot of people off spending that kind of money on a pay-per-view buy, but you're enticing yeah. them with the £10 a month of the network. So it's it, it is a quite a difficult one to answer, really. I would say that okay. my answer would be is that it's great for us, but it, I wouldn't exactly say it's great for the business because it can open up a lot of problems for pay and consistency. Yeah, I, I think they just thought we've got to get with the times here, and yeah. everybody's doing. This, y- yeah, kind of. exactly. Everyone does a streaming service, so it makes sense for them to I, do it too. I mean, like I say, as a fan, it's great value for money. Yeah. And when it first came out, I be- NXT didn't have a TV deal, so that was the only way you could watch NXT. So I get that. That's value for your money. Um, and yeah. I don't want to see this as a fan, but for their financial gain, I would have gone right. Uh, because I think it's like weeks until like uh, the most recent episode of Raw turns up on the network. I, th- I think so. The Raw that's ju- we just had on Monday, yeah, I it's because of the deal. Weeks, which I don't know if that's anything to do with TV deals or what. Um, if I were them, I'd have all the original content still there. Um, if they could, you know. I'd have the Monday Night Raw up the following night. Yeah, it, it just for those network subscribers, so they're not waiting weeks because you're gonna know what's gonna happen by then. Yeah. Um, I would have kept pay per views off the network just to keep that box office spy rate going. So you have everything but the pay per views. Yeah. So some people might not see that for value for money. Um, they could have put the price down, I suppose. You know, instead of a tenner a month, could have been a five a month because well, you're not getting pay per views. Um, well, maybe just do do a similar thing like that. But you can put the pay per views up, but you don't do them on the night. They go up a week or two later. Yeah, but so well, the people watched... that are your casual fans, they can watch it on the network when they want. But for the hardcore fans who want to watch it that night, and not have anything spoiled, they got to buy the pay per view. Yeah, well, we've always said with the Saudi shows, yeah, you know, they're, they're treated like actual pay per views now. Yeah, we've always said they should just be network exclusives, yeah. like. Yes, this is a wrestling show, and it will have minor effects with the stories you know on Raw and SmackDown, but not much. This is more just, it's a big show in Saudi, enjoy yourself. Yeah. Um, may, it would have, might have been an idea to go, here's your network exclusives. Some of the pay-per-views are going to be both network and box office. As far as the big four or five, Sky Box Office. Yeah, you could do that. Because no one, you know... Regardless, of, if you're a hardcore fan, you're going to go, shit, I really wish it was on the network, but I'm not missing this. Here's £15 or £20, yeah, whatever yeah, exactly. it 
So, yeah, I didn't mean to hit you with a hard one straight off the bat. No, I mean, it's, <laughs> no, it's fine. But like I said, my answer, I, I would say it's, it's great for us, but it's not. I wouldn't exactly say it's great for the business and the performers because I think there's a lot of potential for people to lose out money in certain places. Yeah, it's a... Uh... Something they're going to have to keep an eye on if they need to. I'm going to have to keep ticking over, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Okay, your right. turn. So my first question to you is, um, who do you want to retire The Undertaker and when? So it's kind of like a double question, really. Yeah. You've, you hit me with the personal. Yep. <laughs> I thought I'd go in there hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Go hard or go home. It, it's, it's so difficult because... We've been saying for years, this is got to be Taker's last match. Every it's single like, Mania, it's like, it's yeah, got to be the end. Mania, yeah, pretty much since Mania, at least Mania 33, we've been saying it. Yeah. Um, I, yeah think then, the, then, I think since 30, since he got beat. Since yeah. then, I've been like, it's got to be the end. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, it was that kind of thing of like, is this how he's going to go with 30? Because there was the, the, the non K fave stuff with... He, he was fucked afterwards. Yeah. You know, uh, um, hospital stuff. And then on the other side, it's like, if he left, that kind of suggests his whole career was based around a street. And yeah. I, I didn't want it to be that. True. And it obviously wasn't. But I don't know. He's kind of come and gone and, and even teased like this is it for so long uh, to the point that the only way he can retire now is if he announces it that this is it. This is my retirement match. Okay. Or if I live another time. As far as uh, where and who, I, I know a lot of people say Survivor Series because he debuted at Survivor Series, and I, and I get that. But with a, a, a star of his calibre, you know, I think Mania is the only show. It yeah, it's the only option. So it would be at WrestleMania. I really don't know which WrestleMania. I mean... You know, I, I kind of want to say next year, but I've been saying that for years. So. <laughs> I've always thought they'd like to work with a round number. So if they weren't going to do it at 30 or 35, I think it's going to be 40. Yeah, it, it, it's all up to him and how much he's got in the tank at the end of the day, you know. Um, the big I question think... is who? Who's the one to, to knock him off his pedestal, basically? The two names that come to mind, or three, sorry, I'll do it in a kind of ranking of like um, third favourite, second, first kind of thing. Um, maybe Drew, because okay. he's, I, I think Tate has got a massive respect for Drew. Everybody loves um, him. We all love him. Yeah, he's, he's, despite there being no crowd, he's WWE champion now, which has cemented his main event spot. But like we've all said, like uh, he must feel robbed, as the fans do, that we didn't get to experience it with him. Yeah. So maybe someone backstage is going, God, I feel really bad for Drew. He didn't get his mania moment. How can we top that? End the Undertaker. Yeah. Something like that. Second, maybe Alistair Black. Yeah, that, because... again, I like that. It's, it, it tells a decent story. I, I don't mind that. He, he just... Not maybe it's all the tattoos or the dark gothicness of it, uh, or the way Alistair carries himself. It just seems it would seem like a proper passing of the torch of like yeah, um, you know Alistair it is established, but he hasn't established himself as like well the next Undertaker or anything. Putting Taker out, I wouldn't say it would rocket you know put a rocket ship on his back and put him straight to the main event spot. It would just be like. Right, keep an eye on me. I'm going places. Yeah, uh, but the favourite, I gotta say, Bray. Yeah, because I thought you might say. That. I was thinking you might say Sting, but then I thought I think that ship is well and truly fucking sailed. You know what I mean? That that horse has bolted considerably. Yes, don't get me wrong. If it happens, you know, that, that we still part of me that's excited. I, I but... won't be. I, I I'll be like, this is gonna be shit. It is, because, like, Taker can't go the way he used to. Sting cannot go the way he used to. It's going to be two old men falling on each other. It's not going to work. But I would not... It's, I'd rather a moment than a match. You know, a segment. Yeah. Um, Just something of mutual respect. That would do for me. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be expecting match of the year at all. Uh, if anything, I'd be expecting what Goldberg and Lesnar did at Mania a couple of years ago. Just a spot fest. Very quick. 
five, six minute match, something like that. Yeah. The fact that what they needed, Sting and Taker just going for it. So Bray's the top yeah. answer then? Yeah, I just think um, with how much like momentum Bray has at the minute, taking Taker out would kind of do it as like, we can do pretty much anything with you now and you're always going to have that momentum behind you. I mean, it's going to be one of those, unless we proper really fuck it up, you're going to be okay. We can do a couple of fuck-ups, but you've got this to lean on as well as, you know, what you did to Cena at Mania this year. Um, and as from the non kayfabe point of view again, the fans have got to be so impressed that you can have, come in with the, the you know, the Charlie Manson kind of character and keep that going strong for a good few years, despite bad booking um, segments or whatnot, and then reinvent yourself as this character and be even more of a badass. Yeah. It's it's like, right, it's almost like if the, the company don't see it, the fans are like, right, this is our guy, we're choosing him. Like I've just done now, you know, I think a lot of people would probably say Bray as well. Yeah, I think it makes the most sense. Yeah, so I'll go with Ray. I'll go with Ray. Cool. Uh, you think again? Yeah, question two for yeah. me. Um, yeah, for the, I, this is all due respect to like TNA and all that. Um, WWE didn't really have... Uh, their last massive competitor was WCW. The, 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 the Monday Night War, that was it. They were competing against each other. Um, obviously, WCW's gone. We do have New Japan and Ring of Honor, but they seem to be standalone kind of, kind of companies. You know, they, they've got no interest in competing with WWE or trying to put them out of business. They're going, they don't care if WWE puts on a better show. It's like, well, this is our show. So they're differently. Impact's kind of dead in the water. Um, and now we've got AEW, which, as far as I can see, they're, they're doing really well. Um... When there was no actual, like, pure competitor like WCW, um, WWE was kind of the only place you could go. That was the, the big league. So maybe a lot of people were stepping on eggshells and just kind of going, it's pissing me off, but I've got nowhere else to go. This is the company. Now that AEW are about and they can take talent and either you know, improve or make them happy, whatever, like they've been doing for a few people, do you think people in WWE should start taking more risks? As in, you know, pissing people off that they probably wouldn't have in the past, but they think, no, I'm that confident about this. I think I can get over. If they, if I don't and they don't like it, I have AEW to go to. So you reckon, what, but what you're basically saying is, do you reckon certain performers should um, kind of just go out on a limb and do some things that they want to do to try and get over? And if it doesn't work they can fall back on AEW. Yeah, but, well, I, know, I know you should never presume that a company would pick you up. Yeah, that, that, yeah that's, I mean, this... that's the ridiculous thing to do. <clears throat> but, you know, I, I keep, with the amount of podcasts and, and interviews I've seen where people go, take a chance with your character. Um, it's difficult when you're locked down as much as you are. Yeah. And I, mean, I suppose like I say, it's... this will be kind of like the answer I want to give is... You, you can't just assume that AEW will pick you up. Plus, no. also, you can't you can't go out on a limb because your contract is so locked down tight with all these like stupid rules that Vince has put in place where if you screw up and they decide, no, I don't like you anymore, he'll have you sitting at home, sitting at your contract where you're not legally allowed to go and perform anybody, anywhere else. Uh, you'll you won't be getting paid as much because you're not doing any extra shows or any uh, merch sales or anything because you're sitting at home doing nothing. Uh, then yeah. you'll get forced to be jobbed out by some people or you'll get repackaged into some kind of ridiculous kind of um, character like he was going to do with the revival recently. So it's kind of like, yeah, you want to take a chance because you want to do what you know you can do. And if not, you could go to AEW, although it's not guaranteed. However, if it goes the other way, you're... You're, you're, you can be completely ruined by Vince just because he's that much of a malicious asshole. So, in my opinion, no, you can't take those 
chances. If you sign that contract for WWE, you're going to have to abide by the rules. And if you want to go to AEW, you get offered to go to AEW. You just do exactly what uh, Brody Lee has been doing, what Ambrose was doing, and just do the right thing, do the job, and then eventually just leave on your own terms and go and do it. Well, I, I didn't mean as in, like, purposely breaking the rules in a sense of, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to, you know, blame myself in a match or, or anything or do a dangerous move or refuse to jump to that guy, nothing like that. More a, like, for example, if the Becky Lynch, the man character. Um, she did have some input in that, but obviously... I think the original plan, they wanted Becky to be healed. Yeah. Um, but Becky got so much fire and like support that, it, that she just became the female Stone Cold. If that was all her idea, you know, Vince might have been bouncing off the walls going, what the hell are you doing? What the hell's going on? And then heard the fan response. Again, it's a strange company. It would have been like, I can't get rid of her now. She's money. And Yeah, but uh, it's... That's a very rare thing to happen. You know what I mean? It's like it. Oh, if you some, have that confidence. Yeah, you got nine times out of ten. Once Vince has decided what he thinks of someone, it does. You can't change his mind. Doesn't matter what you yeah. do. Look at what they were doing with the summer of punk. I mean, that was all right, but it could have gone ten times better. It was the same thing with Daniel Bryan. That yes, it got to the point where we had to push it forward as fans for Bryan to be in the main event at WrestleMania 30. But originally, he was just going against Sheamus. This is the thing. Yeah. It takes a, it's a very rare like lightning strike in to get that ha- that op- opportunity to present itself and make that change. But as far as like you entering into your contracts and taking those chances, you can take that chance and it may give you everything you ever wanted. But there is so much grey area for it to backfire and Vince can literally destroy you as a character and as a person. So to the point where you don't even want to wrestle anymore like CM Punk. He has no intention of wrestling ever again. Well, no, I mean, I was going to bring up Punk. I mean, he... I, I, would, I wouldn't know if I'd call this a chance. I think the pipe bomb, he would, he just vented. Yeah. He pissed off, he was ready to go, and he sat there and, and told how it is. But he was lucky that he got the attention that he did out of that. If he hadn't have done, but, he'd, have been, he'd have ruined his career. But this, this is it. It's like... <laughs> so again, it's, it's hard to call it a chance, because I bet he didn't see it as that. He just spoke from the heart. Yeah, he just thought, fuck it, if, I don't care anymore. Yeah, if someone else... I, I can't really see anyone else doing it the way he... Just the way he delivered it, what he said, and, and the passion. Like, Titus O'Neil did that. He could repeat that pipe bomb word for word, and everyone would just be sitting there going, what are you doing? Yeah, I, and, and I agree with that. But if, again, Punk had so much confidence in himself um, when he said, I'm the best in the world, any other person, you'd be like, one arrogant prick. But the way he said it, you believed it. Yeah. And then you looked at his, 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 you know, his work record, and you go, actually, this guy is badass. Um, and again, like you say, he said that, and the next thing, I think within like 24 hours, he was like the biggest star in WWE. Yeah. It's, I, I, it's, I know it's a risky move, but I think there's some people there, like you say, you know, no job is guaranteed. You can't just go fuck it and go AEW in Japan or whatever. But there'll be some people there that go, right, am I comfortable just being this lackluster character that I know is not going anywhere um, and, you know, going to be nowhere near a WrestleMania main event if I keep going this way? Or do I create this character in my head and, you know, get all the details to where I am confident this is going to work, that the fans will respond in the way I think they will, and just, fuck it, I'm going to do this on Monday Night Raw or SmackDown. It's, it's weighing up the pros and cons and just it, seeing... It also yeah. depends on how high up you are in the company. If you're literally just starting out and you're on the, you've only just got to the main roster, then no, you can't oh, take yeah, those definitely. chances. Yeah. But if you're like a Dolph Ziggler or something like that, you might be able to take a chance because you've been there long enough. Um... Yeah, I think it depends on your position. Yeah. Do you think it depends a lot more on the, the position of the company now? Because they know that... I mean, at this point, no, you take no fucking chances whatsoever because you're lucky to have a job at the moment. It's basically it. Well, again, they're losing talent to some companies, those that just want to quit. They're releasing talent. I'm wondering if, if more people like 
Cesaro or Shinsuke or whoever, or whoever just go, you know what, I'm out. You know, they, they might turn around and go, look, I've already had a call at AEW. They're prepared to give me a contract. If I have to sit in my ass for six months to run out this one, fine, but I'm gone. The WWE will start panicking. They'll be like, we're losing all our stars. We've already released half but the roster. I just think you say that. I mean, yeah, some people backstage will start to panic and worry and stuff, but Vince won't. He'll just think, ah, oh, fuck him. I'll find someone else. I'll find someone else I can push and do what I'll I I can. Fi- yeah, I, I'll, I'll find my next monkey I can make dance. That's basically what he thinks. He doesn't yeah. think that anybody's a bigger star as someone like John Cena or The Rock or Austin or Taker or Lesnar. None of these people yeah. that are coming up, even, no matter how well he pushes them, he doesn't care about them enough to make sure they never go anywhere else. Like If they, if they eventually go, he'll find another monkey. I mean, yeah, he'll, he'll make his contracts to make sure they can't go anywhere else, but that's to make his benefit. It's not for theirs. But don't you... Th- all the characters you mentioned... Don't you think majority of them took a chance on their character? Yeah, they and did, but like, uh, it was a different time then. It was a very different time then. Right, OK. Uh, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, it's kind of a millennial time, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's so. very different, unfortunately. It's, uh, you can get tied up in a lot of litigation but if you if you fuck up. Yeah, yeah. All right, you'll go. So is it second question for you? Uh, I believe so, yes. Yes, right. So the second question um, I'm going to ask for you is... Do you think WWE should do Mania over two nights going forward? Um, hmm. it's it's difficult one because okay, I know it's like we've got dead air at the minute. <laughs> He's thinking. I can see the little cogs in his brain working. Yeah, it's. Again, there's so many pros and cons on either side. Um, I mean, for a financial thing, if it pays off, WWE will be in the money because, for example, travel packages, their their money will go up because you're essentially getting, you know, at the minute you get Mania, Raw, SmackDown, Hall of Fame, TakeOver, all that stuff. You're essentially adding another night yeah. to that, which means WWE have the right to raise the prices. Um, but some fans might look at that and go, nah, fuck that. Uh, yeah, m- maybe not many, because I'll, you know, I've done the travel package myself and it is worth it. Um, again, on, on the other side as well, when you're sitting there for six or seven hours, it's it's hard to keep invested and you know, not have fatigue. And you know, you, you're looking forward to the main event most of the time. But you're knackered. You know? yeah. so, Plus, like, you've got to think of piss breaks as well. Seven hours. Yeah. You've got to think, well, which match am I going to miss half of trying to go for a piss? Yeah, I, I think the only way I'd know now after this whole lockdown thing is just gone and everything can go back to some relative norm, <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me if at Mania 37, with an audience, they go, let's try that again. And then as fans, we'll be able to know if it works or not. And they will be able to know if it works or not from like a financial business standpoint. I mean, we might watch it and go, that was fucking awesome. I hope they do it all the time. Financially or business-wise, I might go, well, you know, we, we lost more money than we made. It was so complicated. Let's go back to one night. It, it's so hard when you don't know all the details. Um, on paper... I'd probably go with yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'd, I'd rather two nights because not only, if anything, it's new. Yeah. And, I, every, you know, you should always bring in the new because, uh, you know, like I say, you should experiment. If it works, great, carry on with it. If it I, don't, at least you can go back to your old formula. Yeah. I mean, I, um, I'd agree. I, I'd say that two nights going forward is definitely the best option because, you know, it's one more night. People are still going to pay it at the end of the day. It's like Disney World. It's like, if it doesn't matter how much stuff you add on, people are still going to pay it. Um, yeah. And I think it just, it breaks up the weekend because we have a whole weekend about it anyway, don't we? When we go to Birmingham and watch it on the big screens, a lot of people do that. They make a big weekend out of WrestleMania. So if you break it up into two manageable chunks where it's three, three and a half hours a piece, that's more manageable yeah. and then you can really just properly enjoy that energy. You don't get tired at any point because it's just a standard pay-per-view. And personally, I think it is definitely the way to go. It might also, I mean, WrestleMania is always compared to the Super Bowl 
or that kind of thing. Yeah, it is their Super Bowl, yeah. Yeah, but the Super Bowl, it might exceed the Super Bowl, because I've always said anyway with Mania, if you look at, you know, the Hall of Fame and they still have their flagship shows, it's not just the, the biggest night in wrestling uh, that in the year, whatever. Good with words. Um, <laughs> it's the biggest week because you have Hall of Fame and TakeOver and, and Mania and all this stuff. And all if the indie stuff as well. All the indie stuff promotions build themselves around that weekend for like their, like the Comic-Con wrestling type thing where they can get yeah. so many more buys on merch and sales for like tickets for smaller indie shows and stuff. It is, it is not just about WWE. It's all these other ones as well that use that as a platform. If, if they do it, if you, if you look at what, what would happen, you could have the... the the go home raw, you now the raw for mania, um, for the people in the travel package. The following Tuesday, you can open up um, the West Mania access. Wednesday, you can have uh, NXT. Thursday, you have Hall of Fame. Uh, but I'm sorry, you can have Hall of Fame on Tuesday. Thursday, you can have Takeover. Friday, you've got the go home SmackDown. Then you've got Mania Saturday and Sunday. And then you got the roar after. Yeah, so it's doable. So it's more than doable. Seven to eight days of wrestling, which again is a lot for someone to plan and do, but the financial gain could be through the roof. Yeah, hundred percent. So I think it's worth them looking at it. Yeah, I definitely think it is. So yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if Mania Thirty Seven they try it and, and we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. But my final question. Question three. For, for, the, for this week, anyway. For this week. <laughs> the last couple of manias, um, they've kind of... Uh, well, they hit, they struck it lucky with Kofi Kingston going into mania as this is the next guy who's going to get his mania moment and be champion. And it wasn't long after mania 35 that the fans had kind of already decided we want Drew to be the next one. And lo and behold, Drew got his mania moment. Who do you think is next as like the new big star that could get if you look at the roster now and how, how things are going who do you think is going to walk into Mania 37 and be that new star and champion what you mean WWE or Universal or either either who, who's going to get like who's going to be the next big either, star their first world title or you know their Royal Rumble victory to go to the main event of Mania oh that's a good one that is yeah it's it's such a diverse roster, but there's also a roster that needs a lot of help. Yeah, there is. Um, God, I'm just trying to think about like stuff now. This is a problem when we don't discuss it before, and there's a bit of dead air while I'm trying to get <laughs> get it into gear, <laughs> man. I'm trying to think. Um, I mean, I think, uh, like I say, Alistair Black is up there. Um, I do like him a lot. But there's one person that keeps coming into my brain... And I'm thinking, yes, it might be too soon to do it, but I would not be against it if it did happen. And that's Johnny Gargano. Yeah. Yes, I know he's on NXT, yeah. but his feud with What's It is pretty much over. That they, one of them has to come to the main roster soon. It, it, they can't hold it off too much more. If he was to be yeah. the first guy to come up from NXT, win the Rumble, go to Mania, and take the title, that is. The ultimate underdog story is what he is as a character. This, the guy that wins by the skin of his teeth every single time. It makes perfect yeah. sense for him as a character. So if that's what they decide to do, I, I, yeah, that's what, that's what I'd, I'd want to happen. I, Johnny Gargano. I'd, if I, this time next year I'm seeing he's in the main event, I, I, I'd be so happy. I mean, yeah, I'd love him to be the... The Johnny Wrestling character again. You know, the, yeah, the but I think face. when you move him up to the main roster, he can't be heel. He's going to be face, end the story. You can't have him be yeah. a heel. It, it depends on what storyline they put it in. Because, like I said, don't get me wrong. If he, won, he just debuted at the Rumble, won it, went to Mania, and that was it, I'd still be bouncing off the walls with joy. Um, as far as if they wanted to do it like, with only a year, to like build this guy up as like he's going to be the champion. It'd have to be a Daniel Bryan kind of storyline. Yeah. Of yeah, you got so close, and you yeah. just keep missing it, and then powers that be keep trying to push you down, but the fans are still behind you, and you climbed up and stuff. That like, just the that's, risk is, 
Yeah, true underdog story, basically. Yeah, the, the risk with that is keeping those fans behind you. I think they would stay with him, oh, yeah. but, you know, you, you just don't know. Um, but do you think the the Kofi Kingston storyline, it, w- it was more special because it was 11 years. Yeah, it's perfect. Wait. Perfect story. So, do you think 11 years was too long or the longevity of that added to it? I don't think it makes much of a difference, really. I mean, uh, we always love Kofi anyway, so it didn't really bother me about the 11 years. That was just a nice cherry on top of the cake to add a bit more flavour to the story. If it had been five mm. years, it would still been just as meaningful. It just happened to be 11 years it built up to this point, so they used it as their tagline. Um, it's all down to the man, and the man was Kofi, and we, we loved him. And this is why I think Guy Gano's perfect for it, because... We love him so much. He's great as that underdog character, the one that always wins, you know, like I said, by the skin of his teeth. And he just fits that mould perfectly to just that ultimate fairy tale story of coming up from NXT, winning the Rumble and then winning the championship all in the space of a year. That, I mean, and then yeah. even after that happens and that that moment happens, you could have him come out on Raw or SmackDown the next night and then reignite the feud with him and Champa when Champa comes out, sucker punches him, beats the shit into him, takes his title off him. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Just I mean, something yeah. like that. Start that that feud up again in a in a championship title reign kind of thing. And you know what I mean? You could do that. Yeah, I mean, with, I I don't want them to keep overdoing the Champa Gargano story. Yeah, this is. The, I would say that kind of stuff is reserved for four or five years down the line if they decide to do it. Because I don't think that they are going to do Gargano next year, but my point is if if I had to pick if someone... you had it your way. Yeah, yeah, if I had to pick someone, it'd be him. Well, yeah, I, well, Champ has kind of gone on record that he don't ever want to get called up. He wants yeah, to be, you know, that is true. That is a good point. Fair enough. Again, I, I, I thought the question, I didn't think of an answer myself, but think of it, thinking of it now, I might go with Kevin Owens. Uh, um, again, I thought of Kevin, but technically he had his mania moment this year as far yes, as as far the as they're mania, concerned yeah i mean don't get me wrong having a mania moment is great but if if i were in kevin's shoes don't get me, i'd be so happy with the moment i had and like i can now go down to history as a mania moment but i'll be thinking right what's next a lot more yeah the, the, the pinnacle is the main event of mania for the championship yeah but there's only one person he can go against for that sammy correct yeah, that, that's it. That's the kind of the dream thing. Because we said like years ago, like I'd love to see it, love to see it for the championship, but don't pull the trigger too soon. You've got to do it. Right. And it's it, to be honest, it isn't that too bad of a time. He's an ultimate yeah, baby face. Sammy's this arsehole heel. There's no reason for it not to happen. I mean, they could. Uh, it's it, um, it's not an uh, easy thing to do anyway. But they've done it in the past, like the turn in a match. You know, like the whole Bret Hart Stone Cold thing. Yeah. By the end, Bret went in as the face, Austin was a heel by the end of the match. Austin was getting cheered, Bret was booed. Um, I'd love to see it if they can in the story of like the start of the story, Sammy's still a dick, Kevin's the, the hero, and yet they turn it as Sammy as the ultimate underdog again, and Kevin goes back to being a dick. Because I just prefer Kevin is a heel, Sammy. Like a dirty face. tactics and everything, he finally takes the title off Sammy, and then, like I say, it's a mania moment, it's a hell of a story, and then you've got feuds carrying on after that, because you want Sammy being that underdog, trying to get it back, chasing the yeah. title. Well, for saying that, yeah, if it was going to be Kevin as, as the heel, in a way, I'd want him to walk in to mania as champion for Sammy to take it off him for the face pop. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean... Uh, the roster can, you know, it changes so regularly nowadays. Hence, you know, our last podcast, <laughs> people just disappearing left, right, and centre. But people are always appearing as well and getting called up from NXT or from yeah. the performance. Um, so, um, you know, some people you just forget about, like because of injury and stuff. Like, Joe, the Joe world? being one of them. Who? Joe being one of them. Joe, that's it. I nearly went with Joe, but I don't know. Unfortunately, he needs to. He's lost in the shuffle. He needs to find his way out. Yeah, minute. definitely. Um, one of the rumours, uh, just as a side note here, uh, Braun wasn't the only one they thought of to go against Goldberg and win the title at Mania. Who was the other one? One of the rumours with Jeff Hardy. Oh, yeah, I heard this. Which... It's stupid. Wrong. But yes. Well, well, to be honest, Jeff... the result we got was stupid as well, so it's yeah. a complete clusterfuck no matter what you do. 
Yeah, I mean, I think the result of Jeff being the universal champion at the end of Mania rather than Braun, I would have preferred. Yeah, but I just and don't I legitimately see Jeff beating Goldberg. No, that's the thing. That's it just fair. sounds so ridiculous. Yeah, Jeff beating Goldberg, I would have believed for one. And two, as much as I like Jeff, I mean, I've been watching it for years, he he can't come in after all his fuck-ups and get rewarded with Universal title at WrestleMania. No, no he can't. He needs to start the ground up. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so I say Gargano, you say KO. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah, I think they're fair choices for both of us. Yeah. Really. Right, your right. Final, question. final question. Question three, final question of the podcast. Uh, you're going to love this, right? Okay. All right, ready? Yeah. Can you tell us about your first wrestle training experience? <laughs> um, no. <laughs> Come on. I try to remember. I, mean, <laughs> such a, such a... I even went up to Sarah before and I said, Oh, this is what I'm going to ask him. She goes, don't be a dick. I was like, oh, I'm fucking asking him. I don't care. It's worth it. It's a... I want everyone to know. I mean, it, to be fair, it's such a blur right now. I mean, sometimes I can't believe that. All right, well then, give us the short version then. The short version Otherwise, we'll be is... here for an hour extra. Right, the short version is, my brother wanted to do it first, Um and I was just kind of, I was a bit dumbstruck, but he explained why he wanted to do it. And I thought, well, why can't I do it with you? You know, it's something I've always wanted to at least try. So I went with him straight after work, got a train to Dudley. Um, is it Dudley? Yeah, yeah, I think it was, yeah. Um, just a side note, shithole of a town. <laughs> <laughs> um, Played there once. Yeah, walked away up the street past all these like fancy gyms to end up in this like industrial garage with a ring that just fit inside. I was like, this is not what I was expecting. Um, about eight other people showing up, um, all pretty much bigger than us. <laughs> um, well, it's not hard. <laughs> no, no. Um, I, I really, who was it that trained us? Um, oh my god! It was it, it was it NXT UK guy. I can't remember. Was it uh, Travis yeah, something? Oh, oh. Oh, I nearly said Trent Seven then. No, no, Something Barker, weren't it? Was... No, it, uh, the Kiwi Buzzsaw. What's his name? Oh, God. Was it Someone some... commented. It. Anyway, it was an NXT UK guy. And, yeah, he ran it and, he, you know, did speeches and stuff, for, like commitment and all that stuff. And a lot of it was just, um, it started off as, like, basic exercises of like rolls and whatnot then we're hitting the ropes and, and you know, all this kind of stuff and again it, <laughs> it all kind of goes by as a blur but eventually he told uh, the people who already knew how to bump to go like pair up go outside uh, I want to see a three minute match yeah plan it you two being me and my brother stick behind we're going to go through bumps which was fine. I, I you know, did the, the bump training fine. I know what bit you want me to say. <laughs> you, I mean, like you're building up to a climax here, so you've got yeah. to, you've got to say it. You <laughs> Without, I can't really explain it very well, so I'll, I'll just come out and say it. Right, you were you were bumping like yeah, basically on the, on the ground, and you said to do what twenty five of them in a row. Something like 30, 25, 30, just throw myself back from a sitting position. You know, Hands out, out, make a sound. Yeah, just keep doing that. But he made it very clear, you know, to avoid whiplash, keep your chin tucked in. Um, and I was doing fine, but you know, after a while of just the strain in your neck, focusing on your chin, and obviously you're going up and down, with something had to give. <laughs> <laughs> And just about, I don't know, 20 odd ones in, just this little. <laughs> it came out. And I just thought, I hope they didn't pick up on that, but they did. Oh, didn't um, you lock eyes with him as well? Didn't he clock you? Yeah, he kind of looked at his other instructor. He really pissed me off, I can't remember his name. Um, and just kind of. He, he, he made a throwaway comment. It wasn't like, can you believe that? It was, it was almost a kind of, we've all been there kind of comment. <laughs> yeah. But I thought, oh, God, whatever. Continued running the ropes. Before we knew it, it was the end of the session. And Zach, my brother, 
didn't hear that I'd, I'd got. So <laughs> he, the first thing he said to me was like, I really enjoyed that. What about you? I was like, I farted in his face. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't How do you think really, it went? <laughs> yeah, I can't really get over that. You know, it would have been horrible to do it to anybody in that gym. <laughs> But to an NXT UK guy. An NXT UK star, you know, a guy that you got, I don't know, but, you know, I respect anyone that sets foot in the ropes and does that kind of stuff. To have instant respect as he walks in and before you walk out, you're in his face. I don't know. <laughs> uh, need, needless to say, you didn't go back, did you? I didn't go back, no. <laughs> if that wasn't the reason, the reason was just the, the schedule. It was of it, travel, with, yeah. Uh, with, yeah the didn't travel you, um, and all that. Didn't you catch your arm on the turnbuckle at some point as well? I did catch my arm. Um, again, it was rope and turnbuckle training, and he, he wanted us to springboard off the second rope while holding the two top ropes and jump over and land on the apron. Um, you don't realise how high you actually are from you know, from the top of the turnbuckle to the, the, the canvas. Not too bad. Yeah. When you're jumping from inside the ring to outside the ring, the the, the ground from from the top turnbuckle to the ground itself, it looks really high. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone was kind of hesitant, and you know, I'm in my head thinking, I can't be hesitant. I just got to go for it, which I did. But the problem is that the room was that small. Um, on two sides of the ring, it was just a brick wall. You didn't really have a much room to swim. Yeah. So I kind of clipped my foot on the wall and my other foot on the ring post and the ring post wasn't like um, curved off like you see in WWE, it was just a pole. So I caught the, the bottom of my armpit on the the, the rigid, rigid rigid edge of the, the turnbuckle post and cut my arm open. <laughs> At first I thought it was a graze and then blood started trickling down my vest. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> He's bleeding. He's bleeding. He's bleeding. He's bleeding. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but yeah, it's worth it. I believe for this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, but, that's pretty good. Yeah, so yeah, Josh, Josh farted in front of someone on his first ever wrestle training. I mean, <laughs> I've heard this story like four times, but I thought to myself, if I can't use this opportunity to let more people <laughs> find out about this, then I, I don't yeah. know what I'm doing with myself. I'm not blaming you. I'm not blaming you. At all. <laughs> I mean, it's really a bother me that I can't remember this guy's name. So. If you do, if anyone does know, put it in the comments thing. He knows he's Pete. Kiwi- he knows Pete uh, Dunn, doesn't he? Pete Dunn has been there a few times, or used Pete to. Pete Dunn was there because uh, he mentioned that Pete sometimes popped in because he, he's a brummy, and I think he was United Kingdom champion at the time. Yeah, he was. And I thought if he comes in with the belt, I don't know if I'm going to be more starstruck from Pete or that's the UK belt. That's the actual <laughs> UK belt, you know. But uh, he didn't. But you know, hey ho, shit happens. Oh, so yeah. there we go. Story. Lovely little story. Need to get that out. Yeah, I, I, I knew why you saved that question to last. Oh time. yeah, that's why I made sure yeah. that you went first so that I would have the last question. <laughs> oh, it makes sense. Uh, we'll make sense. <laughs> okay, I think that's it. Yeah, it. that's so, it. We're done. Um, yeah. So what? We're gonna do it again next week as well. Yeah, I'm down with that. I say I. I, I, I promise should. all three questions will be normal wrestling ones next week. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's it's actually quite difficult to think of three. It really so, is. Yeah, I have to go and brainstorm. But yeah, I think for all listener, we have or <laughs> <laughs> listeners, whatever. And there's, uh, there's at we'll least continue. two. There's at least two. Yeah, us two. <laughs> um, yeah, I think we'll continue it until like you know things start going back to the norm. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, why not? Um, cool. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, lockdown d- number two done, and. Yeah. Like, subscribe, and we'll be back next next week at some point. Yeah, this time next week, probably. Yes. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.